Good morning and welcome to day two of the NWR Virtual Investor Conference Series 11 for May 2022. I'm Banjo Blake and will be your host for today and tomorrow of the conference. We have an excellent lineup for all healthcare, industrials and technology companies providing presentations over the course of the day. You can view the schedule via the NWR social media accounts or at the nwrconference.webflow.io for a detailed lineup. If you wish to ask a question to the presenters, please submit a question via the Q&A panel and we will address these at the end of the company presentation. First up, on day two's lineup, we have Dubba. Dubba is a disruptive innovator in the multi-billion dollar call recording industry. Its software as a service offering removes the need for hardware, productization, or capital expenditure. Founded in 2011, the company is a world leader of cloud-based call recording solutions. Co-founder, CEO, Steve McGovern and CFO James Slaney joined me today in the virtual conference. Both Steve and James bring a breadth of experience within the telco sector to help uh, build Dubbo from the ground up. Thanks for joining me this morning, gents, and I'll hand over to you both when you're ready to go. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. I'm going to see you. Oh, you're the CFO. Huh? You know, I'll see you. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. We um, are about to actually do a, a take part in an event at, um, for the telecommunications sector in an hour and a half. So we thought we'd actually introduce some of that content into this presentation, because I think, um, you know, maybe a lot of you have heard us present before on the fundamentals of the business. So um, the, the message is a pretty clear one to the telco carriers, and we thought we'd uh, run through that message with you. Obviously, if there's any questions at the end, you can, you can ask us. So our business uh, is all about service providers. Uh, service providers are actually fundamental to both our philosophy and also our business model. Uh, we talk to a lot of major service providers globally every week and as you can imagine in the industry it's a very dynamic climate on every level there's challenges everywhere but there's also opportunities and potential gain as well so what we are talking about is you, saw, you heard the introduction there around Dubber being a core recording company that's really product number one for us uh, it's how we came to market with a tangible outcome of a platform that we built to serve the service providers globally so our platform is the core of our business. Core recording is number one, and that's where all our revenues and our growth that you see at the moment is from. The telcos themselves um, are under pressure like never before to unlock potential from the life of their network. You know, conversations make the network. The, the, the network is full of untapped data in communications, whether it be uh, verbal, whether it be text, whether it be chat, SMS, the whole thing. And um, basically, the, the carriers themselves are probably the only people who aren't monetizing it. Everyone else is monetizing it. And the difference between an internet based company such as um, you know, Zoom or Google, et cetera, and the revenue uh, gained from the network from the carriers is actually quite stark. So when you look at the, you know, some of the McKinsey uh, or Gartner analysis, the telco profits are declining by up to 46% percent but the internet companies are actually increasing by um you know over 40 percent up to 60 percent TikTok, believe it or not is the most download downloaded app in australia after new south wales and after services new south wales and services victoria but none of this would exist without the actual telco infrastructure so what dub is all about it's about taking the calls that go across the network into the dubber platform uh, creating data which can be uh, turned into content with uh, unending applications. Um, now, coming back to core recording for a minute and maybe um, analysing what we do today compared with what the platform is built for for future as well. Gartner recently released a, a statement which is 75% of all conversations with business will be recorded by 2025. Now, they're not talking about core recording as we know it today for compliance. What they're talking about is they're talking about the fact that calls have got content rich data in them. Enterprises, businesses, individuals want to use that data. They don't want to be repeating conversations. They want the, the extractions from the calls. And at the moment, there are two ways of getting it. The first way is you deploy third party hardware, software applications, and all the money goes to those hardware, software application vendors but it's not scalable so it's done enterprise by enterprise by enterprise or you can actually go to the source of the call which is the network and that's what dubber does so we get carriers to connect their 
networks to our single global platform and then we capture the data at scale every single call from any user on that network for any purpose we can capture turn into usable data if it's compliance related or if they need to record calls for dispute resolution or business insight it's call recording um, and obviously we've got all the tools to be able to listen and manage that but obviously what we're really all about is having this underlying um, set of data which uh, businesses and consumers of all size could capitalize on so that's that's the background to the company uh, and what we're trying to do to give you an idea of the market that we're in um, you know unified communications is is was actually expanding the service provider uh, climate it's now actually challenging the service provider climate because whilst um, it's projected to be 167 168 billion dollars worth of uh, you know, revenue by 2025, you've got Microsoft coming in with over 270 million monthly Teams users at the moment, Cisco WebEx calling, for which we are actually uh, embedded as a standard feature on every service. To give you some idea, Cisco WebEx calling has hit 8 billion calls a month on the platform that we're connected to. And, um, you know, in 2021, Zoom, for example, grew by more than 54 times in Australia, because we're all using it as um, hybrid workforce um, came in through the, through started with the pandemic and came obviously continued post the pandemic as well. So um, what we're doing at Dubber is we are approaching the carriers. We have 170 of them have signed agreements to um, connect their networks to our platform. And they can actually, for the first time, look at capturing that content for their customers, for the benefit of their customers, and the customers actually capture it. Uh, themselves off the network and obviously there's various levels of monetization that monetization can be call recording which is all our revenues today but it goes much broader so you imagine you're on a mobile network and um, you have a meeting you you get a nudge uh, basically at the end of the call to talk about some of the content or maybe the fact that you've actually agreed to set up a, a uh, um, another meeting it drops into your calendar invite the regular applications for it and all of this comes off the back of what we released at Mobile World Congress, which is notes by Dubber. And I'll get James just to very quickly take it through that. So just to, uh, I suppose, jump in there a little bit as uh, Steve's uh, on a roll. Uh, so at Mobile World Congress, I think we said this before, it was in Barcelona in February. Um, uh, we're clear there that the telcos, as Steve was saying, are looking for, look, looking for differentiation, add value on their networks, uh, add, you know, increase ARPU, um, and sort of retain some of that lost revenue, as Steve was saying, for these competitors that are coming to the market for them. When we're at, at Mobile Congress, we, we launched uh, what we call Notes by Dubber. It was off the back of the acquisition that we bought Notive, but we've done a lot of work to bring that through our application. Now, Notes by Dubber itself is a productivity application where the service providers can actually it provides that to the customer, whether they're on a, a mobile device, they're on Microsoft Teams, on Zoom all through a single platform provided by Dubber. So they can have all their networks connected and they can have one product or one application called Notes by Dubber, they can supply it to the customer on, on every service they sell with their customer. Now, in what Steve was saying also, what's resonating with the providers is that not just this application that we might sell a monthly fee, a subscription fee, which is called Notes, they're looking to embed some, a portion of that into their standard offering. Same as what we've done with Cisco in regards to uh, call recording as a standard feature and Cisco WebEx calling. The same way we're actually talking to providers and what providers are looking to do is embed a version of notes or features of notes in their services. When Steve said a nudge, it's basically a feature of notes embedded in a mobile offering to help us get to a low, a low uh, attach rate, or sorry, a low price point attach rate that attached to lots and lots of users on the network in a real seamless way that that user can instantly incur, create revenue for Dubber, attach rate to lots of, lots of end users and ability to upsell those customers to the full notes by Dubber product, product or other applications on the Dubber network. And we benefit, but also it's a, it's a great way for the service provider to utilize their value in their networks and utilize the Dubber platform for that. All right, so that's a little bit about um, the philosophy, if you like, the market that we're in and, and what we're aspiring to do. It's a, it's a big picture aspiration, um, you know, to basically uh, create content from the world's largest communications networks. We've got the brand now that's resonating in the industry. Um, we've got a platform that's trusted um, beyond reliability into innovation. And um, you know, if you talk to any of the large carriers and the people that we deal with, um, we're in a great position as a company in terms of the product, the branding and, and the philosophy. 
Well, let's just have a quick um, view on uh, how the company's been performing. Um, over the last 12 to uh, 18 months, we've been very much on a growth curve and um, you know, against the dynamic market, obviously, in the last four or five months as well. And what that growth, growth curve gave us was the opportunity to really turbocharge the business. And we um, completed a capital raise of $110 million in July last year. That has underpinned everything we do at the moment. Um, so while on the face of it, we're growing the business in core recording revenue, uh, for example, we grew our ARR by $5 million this quarter, you know, which is the envy of most companies on, on the ASX. Um, underneath, we've been investing in our infrastructure to go beyond our current plan and into these new areas of um, much larger content and data management and, and uh, you know, provision of products, etc. So we um, made the investment uh, in the first half of the financial year to the point where if you look at our quarterly report, you know, our net outflows for the last quarter were actually $7 million less than the December quarter. Uh, we've got 36 months of cash in the bank where we, have a, we still have $100 million in the bank. We don't need 36 months to fulfill our business plan, um, but that cash allows us to accelerate the business plan and expand the opportunity um, you know, on much bigger levels everywhere. So that's what we're doing. Um, we've, we used to grow our business by selling more recording services to more customers. We still do that. And that's the growth that you see on a quarterly basis. But underneath, we're actually able to drive revenue to the same customers, to a broader base of customers, to a total addressable market of the whole network by delivering product that applies to the whole network, not just call recording. It's not a pivot, it's an evolution. It's not, it's not even an evolution that's new to us. It's actually part of our business plan that we had from the outset when we designed the actual um, platform in the first place. So um, if you look at our quarterly report, there is a video attachment. Um, I urge you to have a look at that if, um, if you just want to get an insight into what the company looks like and how we've maybe invested in some really high quality people and infrastructure in the previous quarter. And we believe that we'll reap the rewards of that and continue to grow our existing revenues, you know, to, to meet that delta, if you like, between outflow and revenue. Um, that's obviously still a goal of the company, but the, uh, the aspirations are global. Um, so other things of note, we have 540,000 users of the platform now um, for our typical core recording products. We are connected to four foundation partners, the largest one being Cisco, which we've uh, noted whereby we a version of Dublin is actually a standard feature of every user. So if you get Cisco WebEx calling, you automatically get Dubber as a call recording uh, feature. And we can then take that and expand the, um, the revenues up to compliance type uh, programs, etc. And that has a, you know, uh, an accretive revenue stream of its own before we get into this broader picture we're talking about today. So that's where the company is at at the moment. Um, and we'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks for that, guys. Appreciate um, the insight into the company. Um, unfortunately, have not got any questions as yet. If you are seeking to have your question answered, please drop a question into the Q&A box now. Okay. So while we're doing that, maybe we talk about, um, you know, what's happened in the current market and where, and where that leaves Dubba. Uh, so we are fully funded in our plan. And obviously we have, um, you know, having $100 million for our business at the bank makes us, um, you know, bulletproof to that point. Um, we are looking to continue to grow. The area where we've maybe changed our view is in uh, mergers and acquisitions. So part, we were on a pretty heavy M&A strategy. Um, we'll still execute uh, M&A opportunities if the business looks right and the technology needs to match our, our or the, the way their technology works needs to match our aspirations. We don't want to be bolting on um, technologies that cause delays in our own uh, growth pattern. Um, I think we're trusted now as, a, as an M&A acquirer. We, we bought two businesses in the last 12 months. Both of them have been integrated really well. Uh, the people are really important assets and they've come on the journey. The technologies are important assets in, in the case of Noted and that's formed the base of of what we now call notes for Dubber. So that we've been really successful in the um, in the two acquisitions, one which was a recording revenue generating business where we've grown those revenues um, relative to the actual carriers that they were connected to originally. And the other one was a technology acquisition where, which as I say, we've 
we've managed to actually get their technology served out of the Dubber platform in the way that we do everything else as well. So that's been uh, successful from a technology perspective. Um, we obviously valuations have changed in the market, except in the private sector, who's, you know, where maybe valuations haven't changed as quickly. So I think whereas six months ago we'd look at potential acquisitions and say, you know, this is a really good multiple, let's buy it, let's do a mix of, um, you know, cash and, and script. I think at the moment, holding onto our balance sheet is probably a primary objective of ours in the current uh, market. I think it gives everybody confidence and, and there wouldn't be too many other companies with, um, you know, growing ARRs of the mid 50 million, um, you know, with $100 million in the bank value where we are. So I think at the moment, that's a good launch pad for us to maintain that cash balance and continue to grow our business organically, which is really proof of the, of the business plan in the first place. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, just got a question popped through. Uh, why is there usually a mismatch between reported revenue and cash receipts in your four seats? Uh, we're, our, our customers, this is actually a really important question, so thanks for that. We're, we're not a SaaS company, we're, we're different, we're more than a SaaS company. So while we've got a 540,000 um, end users of the service, there aren't 540,000 credit cards hanging off uh, you know, a SaaS service. Our customers are telcos, and those telcos can be 90, 120 days uh, terms, uh, there's flexibility in the arrangements we have because they're all long-term arrangements and during uh, relationships that are based on network connectivity. We've never been churned from a network. So with all the networks we've connected to, we've actually never lost connectivity of those networks. So the commercial terms start and, and continue in a different manner than you would if you were buying a subscription to Dropbox or something like that where you put your credit card on. So obviously our customer churn at the end is also negligible because our customers are actually the carriers. So the end users currently tend to want to keep their recorded data. So we're not you know, fearful of end user churn. It's not a big factor in our business, but the price, if you want to call it that, of our business model is that we're not dealing with the direct user for all those reasons. We're actually dealing with the people that serve the service from the network. So your British telecoms, et cetera, et cetera. So we're very secure in terms of our receivables but they don't flow in the same way as you would if you were getting consumers to pay for them on a monthly basis. In the last quarter, obviously we, we build $8.5 million in the December quarter. Sorry, in, in yeah, the December quarter, we collected um, over 8.5 in the March quarter. And I think normalized for constant, constant currency would have been over 9 million. So that gives you an idea of the cash flow. And I think if you look at our presentation, our recent presentation, you'll see that the Delta has maintained as constant for the last three years in terms of um, billings versus receipts. Awesome. Thanks for that, Steve. Um, another question. When do you see uh, your ARR really breaking out in terms of pushing double digit qu uh, quarters? Uh, sorry, when, uh, when do we see double digit quarters? Mm, um, Difficult for us to predict. Obviously, we're, we're we're growing. You know, in the December quarter, we did from memory eight point one million dollars worth of ARR. Um, we five million sort of our our pass mark, if you like, at the moment. I think uh, investors would expect us to go at five million a quarter. Um, we're actually quite pleased in the current quarter because January is just non-existent in our in our world. The service providers and sales have what's called embargo periods where they are not allowed to do any items and changes on their network for, for a month, um, you know, over Christmas and into uh, most of January. So uh, typically we wouldn't expect the same growth rate in this quarter, but obviously there's a minimum level that we aspire to, which obviously we achieved. Um, there were some uh, um, foreign exchange fluctuations, which were not helpful um, for us in the current climate because most of our new businesses overseas in the UK and North America. Uh, but I think to answer the question, we're building our ARR, we're building the team to generate the ARR, so we would hope that double digit quarters are not too far away. Awesome, thanks for that. Uh, unfortunately, that is all we have time for. Uh, thank you for joining the first session of the NWR conference this morning, and thank you to Steve and James. Pleasure, thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, guys.